give me any day a prophet who's 70% accurate but walks in the love of it, but, you know, speaks from the love of the Father than a 100% accurate prophet that has none. What precedes, what normally precedes you publicly being able to release what God's placed on you is such a season of rejection, such a season of being outcasted. Uh, and I'm a pastor, Mike, back to you. You know, I believe it's so important for us to steward the prophetic. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of false words, a lot of false prophets, a lot of proper liars. There's been a lot of profilers, you know, just uh, all of that mumbo jumbo. And I feel like the Lord's saying, I want you to learn to steward the prophetic. And if we don't steward even the little words, the small words, you know, how are we going to increase in the glory? How are we going to step over, step into the new? So I feel in my spirit that God's uh, speaking to us right now, Nate, about the importance of stewarding the prophetic, not just the voice of God within us, but even uh, the prophets, the circle, the company of prophets, the prophetic voices around us. How, how, how do we steward the prophetic? Nate, how do you steward the prophetic? that prepares us to enter into the greater glory even more. So how, do, how do we do that? I feel like one of the biggest, I want to set this up this way, one of the biggest um, inhibitors for people, uh, disablers for people who are prophetic, is the fact that they feel outcasted a lot. There is a season for prophetic people that they don't feel like they fit. Go there. There, there is a season for them that they just intense rejection. Wow, this is hitting people already. Wow. This, can you put a heart up or something if this is you? You've been, you've, you're, pro, you're a prophetic person. You've been through this. Okay? I can't see the hearts on my screen, but I'm sure they'll come up. What precedes, what normally precedes you publicly being able to release what God's placed on you is such a season of rejection, such a season of being outcasted. Um, I'm not trying to say that you, that, that God's ordained that, but what I do know is that the doorway to walking into stepping into your office as a prophet often that often precedes it. And this has been a season that I've been sensing that God's needed prophetic voices to encourage and to lift up those who've been in that place of wow. being damaged, feeling rejected, feeling wounded, feeling like, God, I know you gave me something, but I lost it somewhere. I'm in hiding. And my particular heart in this season is because I, I get words for nations and things, but God's have been saying, no, find the lost ones, call them out of the cave, call those people into who they are. This has been a season, like you said, of the company of the prophets where, where God's just, he's actually saying, I'm, 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 I'm surrounding these people with family because I need my voices to be healthy. I don't just want people that can speak That's truth. Good. I don't. I just want. Don't. I don't just want people who can be hundred percent accurate. There's a friend of mine. He's an Australian prophet. Um, wow. called Adam Thompson. I heard this friend. This he said, "Give me any day a prophet who's seventy percent accurate but walks in the love of it, but you know speaks from the love of the Father than a hundred percent accurate prophet that has none. Than a hundred percent accurate prophet that has none." And I agree. And I think that the That's old wineskin of prophecy is these people that sweep in from God knows where, right? No family, no accountability, no nothing. And they just speak a whole bunch of stuff. And it could be true, right? But there's, no, there's, no, there's nothing around them. It's the time for the prophets to be healthy, to be whole, and surrounded by family. Why do prophets need it? Because the prophets speak, the prophets bring they actually bring the family of God. I think about Malachi 4 to 6, where it says, in, in the last days, I'll send the prophet Elijah, turn the sons to fathers and fathers to sons. That's good. We're in a time right now that the prophets are arising, what? To establish family, to bring the lost sons home. And if you're out there right now and you're a prophetic voice, God's been drawing you out of that place of obscurity, out of the sidelines, out of the place of feeling worthless. And he's bringing family to you so that he, your words that come out of you, they're going to be pure. They're going to hit the mark. They're not going to, they're not going to just be a random word that just goes out into the atmosphere with no accountability and no power. We want it to God releases through you actually hit the mark. We want to see it manifest. Prophecy isn't just raising your voice and that's it. It's a done thing. 
it was it, in the old days of the prophecy, it was those things that were spoken were then established. I want to see prophecy actually established. When you speak something, it happens. That's what God wants. He doesn't want, he, he wants power prophets to arise. He wants the Elijah prophets to arise who shape nations and restore the fallen altars. You know, that's what we're called to be. We're not called just to be people who get up and get on social media and speak something and, oh, that sounded great. It tickled my ears. Come on, where's the power? It's going to happen. The sons, sons and daughters arise and get out of the cave and allow God to heal them, be surrounded by family and people that can love on them and champion them and, and just say, go, 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 go. You're amazing. And I, I, I'm just excited about that. That's the day we're living in right now. Yeah. It's beginning to happen more oh, and more. That's so good. Yeah. Oh, that's so good, Nate. I, I feel like you're at a, we're at a crucial uh, moment right now, uh, not just mm. in a conversation and dialogue, uh, which I believe it is, but even in history right now, again, there's a passing on of batons, Lou Engel, the call to the yeah. fans, Billy Graham, you know, there's all these transitions, all these transferences of mantles, yeah. and batons, and of a leadership and headships and all these things happening. Uh, but the greatest glory is this, it's oneness. It's unity, yeah. you know. Of course, Jesus said in John 17, mm -hmm. I pray that the same glory that's on me would be on them and that we would yeah. be one in the same <laughs> like manner. And, you know, I feel like, uh, again, what's the reason why there are prophets, the reason why there is the gift of prophecy, the anointing of prophecy, the functionality of prophecy, the reason why it's so that we could all become one and whole in the beauty and the image of God. And that's the greatest yeah. glory. It's you and I, us being one, functioning as the Father has deemed and, and yeah. ordained and decreed us to be. And, and that's the greatest glory, people of God. And I feel like many people, even watching this and on the replay, Nate, they, they, you're not experiencing the glory because you're too busy trying to steward a gift or a, a prophecy rather than the people around you. And, yeah. you know, uh, the, the reason why a lot of things are lacking is because you're lacking love. You're lacking mm -hmm. the right people. And I believe that God is bringing you into the new by bringing the right people, more and more, the right people to surround you. Like Nate was saying, the company, the people who are going to hold up your arms in that place. Like mm -hmm. Aaron and her held up the arms of Moses. Of course, that even was a prophetic sign of Elijah and, and Moses, you know, surrounding Jesus. And, you know, it's a prophetic sign. And, uh, you know, I, I believe that God wants to establish with a court of two and three wants to establish you in this time in perfect love. The greater glory is in the unity uh, of prophets, apostles, the fivefold, us coming together, laying down our agendas, our ideas, our egos, our logos, our brands, and saying, you know, how can we do this? How can I help you? How, you know, because the gift on your life is meant to help others. And uh, that's yeah. where the greatest glory uh, will manifest as family, the spirit of Elijah. Nate, anything else on your heart, on your mind here? Just as you're speaking then, I, I just saw like the, just the image of, of Elijah throwing his mantle down on Elisha. And I don't know, it just, it just hits my heart so much in this season. That it's like many people who know that they're gifted and called, but they've never felt the Father like throw his jacket on them and say, I cover you. Like wow. everything, I have is your, everything I have is yours. Man, just get ready, people. This is a season you're going to feel the affirmation of the Father. The reason you've never gone is because you've never heard the go. The reason you've, 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 never, you've never stepped into the depths of your office and your callings, you've never felt like there was permission. Wow. The Father's saying, you have my permission. This is a season I'm mantling you afresh and I'm throwing my jacket over you as a covering and as an affirmation and as an acceptance that you have been called and chosen. Now step in that double portion, son. Step in that double portion, daughter. Hit the water and begin to activate the call of God in your life. I feel like it's an ending to a season where you felt barren in your calling and gifting. It's a season where it, God is ending the barren winter over your life where you felt like you've not seen the fruit of what you know is inside of you. The Lord is is saying it is time for that fruit to be released. It is time for what's inside of you to finally blossom and to grow. There'll be no more hindrances. Even from the beginning of the of this broadcast, like you said the word delay, and my, I was I already had the scripture open. And this is the power of the prophetic yeah. decree. But the you know in Revelation ten, where the, the angel had the he shouted, the seven thunders responded, rumbling out their message. 
And it says, no more delay, for in the day when the seventh angel is to sound his trumpet, the mystery of God will be fulfilled, just as he has announced to his servants, the prophets. And I believe that the Lord is saying that it is the season of delay has ended on the voices of God, those who are called to be mouthpieces, those who are called to, to walk in that prophetic glory it is your time to come out of obscurity i feel like even right now that the sign is being broken off you even if you're watching this right now that is being broken off your life all the delay all of the words i hear i just keep seeing words falling to the ground everything yeah. that's been spoken over you that is not from the father that is not from heaven is breaking ah. off you it's falling to the ground it will not carry any more weight over your life my, my, those my, my, words my. that are false prophecies will not they will not influence you anymore, says the Lord. It is coming a new, a new affirmation. The Lord is even anointing your head afresh in this season. He's throwing his jacket on you. He's throwing a fresh mantle upon you. You're going to feel a fresh fire and a fresh passion. You begin to dream like you've never dreamed before. I feel like the Lord's saying that the floodgates are open of revelation. The windows of revelation are opening afresh. You're going to hear and see and you're going to have fresh revelation where you felt like that all you are is just like a tainted vessel and then I feel like the murkiness is leaving all that deep it's like a deep like just I just see like this murky river in people's souls like the Lord saying I'm clearing out the river fresh rivers will flow fresh rivers will flow fresh rivers will flow and the revelation will begin to bubble out from the deep inside of you your spirit man is coming alive even right now in Jesus mighty name do not rehearse the past do not rehearse the past for God is doing a new thing in you. I think the Lord is saying, allow him to detach and sever the past. Allow him to detach and sever. Surrender to the new thing and to the unknown and you will feel fulfilled. You'll feel a fresh bubbling fall and I feel like it's, yeah, I just bah, keep bah, seeing bah. like the Lord saying, like Amos 3.8 who the lion has roared, who will not fear the sovereign Lord has spoken, who can but not prophesy. And the Lord is saying this is a season, you'll feel a fresh roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah come on the inside of you out and this fresh roar is a roar of justice, not just for your life and the restoration, the recompense that is coming for it, but for those around you. As you speak and you prophesy, suddenly things that have been under the influence of the enemy come will come back into alignment in Jesus' mighty name. Get ready, people, because God's doing a fresh thing. And if the old stuff is passing away, the new has come in Jesus' name. Come on. Whoa. Come on. So good. So good. Listen, guys, if you want to enter into the new glory. I know that many of you are right now. The verse that comes to my mind right now is Psalm 23, where the Lord is our shepherd. And you need to allow him to lead you through the wilderness. You need to allow him to lead you. Let his voice, let his staff, let his rod, let it come for you. Carabo. Let him lead you to the streams of living water and green pastures, and he will make you lie down. And that verse... You know, it is messianic, but that chapter, it talks about how the voice of God wants to lead you from glory to glory. He wants to lead you to a place that you've been so desiring that is covenanted to you, to your fathers, to your mothers. It is in a covenant of the family inheritance of God where there's anointing. He will set up a table before you and your enemies, and it's time to feast and to wine and dine in Jesus' name. And I believe that he wants to give you the sharp, acute uh, 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 clarity of his voice to lead you in this season. Psalm 23. He's going to give you peace, people of God. The greatest place uh, of peace is found in being in the will of God. And sometimes that's in the crushing, that's in the pruning, that's in the cutting, that's in the dying. But that's the greatest peace. And I believe that many of you that have been in suffering, going through emotions, feelings of suffering and turmoil, get ready for the greater glory. Because as Jesus said, can you drink of this cup? And they said, yes, we can. Yes, you can. Sharing the cup of his sufferings and of his glory. Are you ready for the greater glory? And I prophesy right now that many of the prophetic words that you have had and you've stewarded those prophetic moments and encounters, I hear God saying, you are not stupid. Many of you feel like you're, you're crazy, you're insane. People call you crazy. People call you out there. They don't understand you. They throw and cast stones at you and you've been casted out. But I feel like the Lord's saying, Thank you for stewarding those prophetic moments, those God moments. Thank you for stewarding my voice. Thank you for stewarding, for obeying in the secret place. 
Listen, just like Cornelius, just like Cornelius, he gave secretly, he prayed secretly, and he had a public promotion. He had a public moment where his whole family was honored and was saved in an instant. And I feel like those private obediences, those private moments where you stewarded the word, the voice of the Lord, he's about to honor you in public. So I hear the Lord saying, as you steward the prophetic, as you honor the prophets, as you honor the voice of the Lord in your life, that secret, beautiful, personal journey, that tapestry with God, as you honor that, he will honor you in public. So get ready, mm -hmm. people of God, because you are going to enter into the greatest glory that you've been desiring for, you've been longing for, by stewarding small steps daily, day by day, daily, small steps, step by step, word by word. You are increasing, you are growing, you are growing and becoming all that God has for you. In Jesus' name. Come on, Nate. Anything else before we just close here? As you're speaking, I just, I just, the Lord showed me a few things. I heard the word for Donna. There's the Donna on here. I'm not sure if it's on the replay or now, but I, I, I just heard, I just saw Donna. I can't see any comments, by the way. So, but there's a Donna, and I heard the Lord saying that I'm restoring your voice. It's like, um, um, I saw that it, 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 it's almost like you lost your voice when either your husband or somebody, someone in your life that you love, like a family member, uh, kept telling you you don't have one. And it was through a lot of hardship you felt squashed and uh, you dropped that voice. And the Lord's saying, this is a season I'm restoring your voice. And God's reminding you, I keep seeing, because I keep seeing like 25 years ago, 25 years, it's like it's been a long time. It's, it's God taking you on a journey back to show you the passion that you used to have back then for this and God restoring that. And I feel like it's, it's a mighty voice. It's a mighty rumbling and you've lost it. And the Lord saying, even now, even now, even now, even now, even now, you're going to feel a bubbling forth. And I just feel the Lord say, allow the grief. Like I see like this hard crust of grief, allow the grief to crack. So the voice can flow. Allow the grief. I feel like it's almost like this grief of, but I've lost so many years. And the Lord's saying, I'm going to restore even the years. I'm going to restore even the years. And then I saw someone else who was, um, I'm not sure if this is physical or if this is spiritual, but I kept seeing it. And this was the first thing I saw was this screw in someone's back. And I'm not sure if there's someone here that you have like actual screws in your back. I'm going to go with both because I, I, I'm not really sure which it is right now. But uh, Steve is like this. I saw this screw. God was unscrewing this screw. So I must believe there's healing for backs and for people who've had metal put ah. in their bodies. Right now in the name of Jesus, dissolve. Right now in the name of Jesus, dissolve. In Jesus' mighty name. But I also I also felt really strongly because I've been sensing the whole broadcast that there is things that God has removed people. There is just words. There is like things that have been like spiritual Come oppression, on. things that have been stopping you, things that have been, Dead. wow, because you on. think about what, what your backbone does, you, you walk in your, your alignment, wow, alignment, wow, Holy Spirit, I thank you, God, that you're realigning, hey. and you're removing every word, you're removing every single hindrance from us, God, in Jesus' mighty name, for those who, God, who've had those things that the enemy is like daggers, spears, and things in them, God, that is in influence and tainted them be removed that spirit of rejection right now go in jesus mighty name there's someone on here and the doctors and people told said to you you're bipolar but you're a mighty prophetic mouthpiece at the same time god's like which do you believe because in this season i'm speaking of there's a fresh commissioning coming over your life i curse that bipolar i curse in the name of jesus that is not who you are the lord saying you're gonna the lord saying that you're you're stepping into one mind in jesus mighty name Amen. Wow. Come on. Hallelujah. And listen up, guys. I want... I want every single person to hold up your hands right now. Hello, do you hear me? I'm hearing you. Praise the Lord. I'm declaring open heavens over you. All the clarity is coming back to your mind. The clear, still small voice is coming strong to you right now. All the witchcraft and oppression and heaviness, the cloudiness, the murkiness that Prophet Nate was talking about, it's gone now. 
and the voice of the Father, where the heavens were open, and he said, this is my son, my daughter, in whom I am well pleased. The clear, strong, authoritative voice of the Father is going to come so loud and reverberate through your inner man and through your whole being. The voice of God is going to lead you afresh in a new way in this season. So I bless you. I bless you. I bless you. In Jesus' name. Is there people on here? Is there people on here that you've you've been asking God for dreams? Who's that? Just if that's you, put something up to say, yeah, I've been asking God for dreams. I feel like there's impart impartation for dreams right here because I feel the Lord saying, I want to speak. You know, dreams are the end times language. It's it's a language of, of God speaking to sons of God. I feel like He's wants to. There's going to be encounter dreams. There's going to be impartation dreams. There's going to be warning dreams. There's going Good. to be revelatory dreams. God's just releasing all of it. So if that's you. And you feel like your nights have actually been more bombarded by nightmares and torments wow, and all those things. That's good. We, oh. we break that in the mighty name of Jesus. No more. We end that assignment. This is ended right now. Bye, bye, bye. And we end that assignment. No more insomnia. No more sleep apnea. No more any anything that disrupts your night. You think about this. In a, in a season and in a generation that God would raise up dreamers, right, which is right now. What, of course, the enemy would try to come and to interrupt sleep in a season where God would use dreams to be the mega highway for him to speak to his children. Well, right now, the Lord is releasing dreams. The Holy come Spirit, on. I thank you that you're releasing dreams. I thank you for that impartation to be able to dream and to be able to, to, be able to re bring to remembrance, God, the dreams. Thank you, Lord, for clarity in dreams, HD quality, 4K come dreams, on, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, even for the wisdom, for the insight to be able to interpret and decipher the things you speak to your children in the night. So, God, I thank you, Lord, to release that in Jesus' name of every single person that's hungry to receive. God, the, Lord God, the, the, the ability to dream, the ability to communicate wow. with you and hear your voice through their dreams in Jesus' mighty name. As soon as I said that, I, I saw a fire in the spirit. So who's beginning to burn up? This is a, If you're starting to burn, I, I can't see, so you have to tell me, Ben, but if someone's beginning to burn up, I feel like the Lord's saying, well, if you're asking why, I haven't felt this, well, I haven't felt fire in my, my hands. I haven't felt fire in my, especially around the neck, shoulders, hands, and feet. The Lord's saying that's just simply, it's almost like um, when this happens, it's almost like the Lord's saying, I'm activating, I'm, I'm beginning to, uh, there's a Good, fresh yeah. fire, and the connection, the electricity of my spirit is coming on those areas of your mind, those areas of your life that have been not active before. The Lord's saying it's an awakening. It's his awakening fire coming upon your life. And so if that's you, just say, yeah, that's me. I'm feeling the fire come over me. What's going on? It might even be for healing as well. Sure, yeah. I get that. Is anyone saying that? Yeah, anyone yeah, putting up? Yeah, yeah, Lord, fire, 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 yeah. fire. In the mighty name of Jesus. The mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God. There's even somebody even right now, the, wow. the, 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 fire, the fire of God's coming over your physical mind, the physical head. I feel like the Lord's saying there's tension that's being released off you. The fire of God's oh, coming over you. You're going to feel a release in your back, in your neck, all those areas. I feel like the Lord's saying I'm bringing ma, shalom ma, ma. peace over you. You're going to feel a tension that's released off you right now. In Jesus' name, you're not going to carry the weight of the world anymore on your shoulders. So Jesus, I thank oh, you, God. Thank you, Lord God, for that deliverance anointing in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on. Wow, wow. So good. And listen, guys, I want to encourage all of you by saying this. We war uh, with the principalities by the prophetic decree, by the prophetic word of the Lord. The enemy, the devil, hates the gift and the spirit of prophecy, which is Jesus yeah. Christ. So we actually do war <laughs> and we do damage to the devil by the voice of the Lord, by the hopeful, yeah. the edifying, the comforting. Ooh, I just felt the wind on that. By speaking aloud the very word of the Lord. So I believe many of you, even after this Facebook Live broadcast, you, right now I can just feel the rivers just bursting out, Nay, I feel like many of you are going into warfare. You're going into birthing right now. You don't even know it, but intercession is birthing. And I, I feel the spirit uh, of intercession just coming down in the room right now for all of you, and you're going to begin to birth. You're going to arabata. You're going to begin to declare and to decree. There's a fight back. There's a roar back. Your voice is back. Your spirit is back. Your strength is back. And right now, the spirit of recovery and restoration is here in this room as you're tapping into the spirit of intercession, which is prophecy, which is prophecy. So keep birthing people of God because that's how we actually enter into the glory of God.
We enter into the glory by birthing, interceding, prophesying. Amen. So I believe that many of you are going to experience that new glory, experience that atmosphere, that doxa, the kabod of his presence. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Wow, Nate, thanks so much for coming on today. I appreciate yeah, man. You, Love you too, wow. bro. Thank, Thank you so much for having me. Come on. I'm sure so many people are blessed and are experiencing the presence of the Lord. If you feel like there was such an impartation and even deliverance, I feel that. I believe it. If you feel there's a realm of deliverance, the Lord set you free. The Lord delivered you. You feel upgraded. There's an impartation you received. Give us some hearts and likes, people of God, and make sure you share this. On your wall, share with a friend. Amen. And Nate, any last closing words before we just bring this to a close here? No, I, I, just, I just say increase over your life, Ben. I just say increase over this season right now. Where I just, I just feel like um, I just saw in the spirit like these, almost like um, just like these plates being locked in the end. I feel the like Lord saying there is even an, an anointing over you for Los Angeles to be. You're going to connect. There's like a unity anointing upon you. And it's like the Lord saying that you are the you and the uniter of streams and rivers, and the Lord saying that you're going to be the one to facilitate, and it's going to actually be the precursor to an actual revival in LA in terms of denominations and churches coming together and being one voice for the Lord. So I say, bless, pray blessing over you, people of God. Just put your hands up and bless this mighty man. We thank you, Lord. We say increase over his life. Oh, we say, Lord God, fill his cup. Let fresh rivers of living water flow. This will be a season of so much overflow, God. So much overflow. Lord, fresh strength, God. Fresh strength. He's stirring up fresh strength upon you, God. And I thank you, Lord God, for the mighty army that you surround him with, God, to be able to help him accomplish what you place within his heart. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that you would bless him for blessing so many other prophets and for honoring myself and so many others so well and the fathers and the leaders also around him that have gone before him, God. I just pray blessing upon his life. In Jesus' mighty name. Thanks so much, Ben, for having me. It means so much. Come on. So good. It's such an honor, brother. Such an honor. Somebody just texted me and said, ovarian cancer was just healed. Come on now. Bam, bam. <laughs> Come on. Hey, Nate, real quick, before we close yep. here, uh, 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 how can people find you on your website? I know that you have like a prophetic school, online mentoring and all that. What is that? And then we'll, we'll just post it up and we'll close it out here. Yeah, so um, you can you can find Christy and I at nateandchristy.co or also at everydayrevivalist.com. Um, we, we run schools to help people operate in the fullness of their calling uh, and to, for the, the mighty, especially for prophets, especially for prophets. We really just want to raise up a family of God that are healthy and whole. So you can find that at myyeartogrow.com. We just started our second season for the year, and it's just uh, amazing running with some hungry people and, uh, yeah. Thanks for, yeah, go and check it out and hope the words encourage you as well.